few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. Bill, these stories are wonderful and are really, really take us back into, you know, a great view back into the Ventura County. Who have you got next? Joe Reardon. Uh, Joe's father started a funeral business in Ventura in 1911. And Joe continued. Uh, Joe's uncle and all his brothers are also in the funeral business, and they all originally came from Chicago to Ventura. Uh, they came here by train, actually, the whole family, in 1906. And back at that time, uh, when a family was coming out to the West Coast, they'd rent a whole railroad car, and they'd stick the whole family in there, or sometimes two families. They'd stick the household stuff in there, the eating stuff, the cooking ware, and sometimes they'd put a cow and a milk and their favorite goat in there, along with all the implements to take care of these animals. Um, Joe went to kindergarten school that was located on Palm Street, where the uh, Palm Street and, and Santa Clara Street is. It's where the Senior Citizens Center is today. And then later, he, he went to Plaza School on Santa Clara Street, where the current post office is today. And across the street from that is Plaza Park, and the Plaza Park is named after that grammar school. Okay, he, uh, he also went to Villanova, Villanova High School the first year it was open, and he was part of the first graduating class from Villanova High. I would like to present to you today Joe Reardon, funeral director. Cool, let's see it. Well, I'd like you folks to meet Joe Reardon. Joe, sure glad to have you with us. Yeah. We've had a lot of fun visiting and reminiscing, uh -huh. and we're going to share some of that now. You know, he's, you've spent almost a lifetime here in Ventura. Where did your family come from originally, Joe? Originally Chicago people. Uh -huh. I was born in Kansas City on the way west, and I got here when I was six months old. This travel was kind of slow in those days. <laughs> you could have come by ox cart, now come on. Not quite railroad, but did you? Yeah. Any stops in between? Or? First, my father went to Nogales, Arizona, yeah. and thank goodness he didn't stay there, and then he came on to Ventura to Santa Barbara and then down to Ventura. How do you ever hear about Ventura? I have a, an uncle that was already in the funeral business in Santa Barbara. Went in there about 1906, I think. This is kind of a family uh, there was business, then. Three brothers were in the funeral, three men were in the funeral uh, business mm -hmm. who married sisters. That's how it came. I out. see. The other one was in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 1911 is when it started. Ventura, yeah. And you've gone to school, of course, here and all that. You, uh, you know, what was your first school? Do you remember? I went to the, the uh, kindergarten on Palm Street. Where the Holiday Inn now, uh, Holiday, I mean the, the uh, senior Ooh. citizen high rise. Oh, yeah. Is. Yeah. 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 Who yeah. was your teacher? Well, one of them, there was two of them, and the one of them I can remember was Miss Olson. I don't forget who the other was. Was she a tall, heavy lady? She was heavy blonde. Yeah. I she was my kindergarten teacher. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. About uh, eight years later, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then where'd you go to school? Then we finished that and we went to the old, the old Plaza School. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got some pictures here of uh, the old Plaza School. We ought to see. Because a lot of folks went to that school. Yes, They're still around. And, and what's the intersection? What What's there now? That's there. That's where the post office is now. Oh, yeah. And the palm tree that's in front of it is still the same palm trees in front of the post office. Yeah. Across, well, across from the park. Right across from Plaza Park. That's where it got its name. I suppose. The yeah. Plaza School, Plaza Park, Plaza Post Office. There it is. Right there. That palm tree you said is still there. It's still there. Mm -hmm. But the school is gone. I, was, I think this was originally built for the high school up above, wasn't it? Very likely, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you went to uh, then you went to high school after you finished 
Plaza. No, when I finished the plaza in the fifth grade, I think, about that time, the population of Ventura was building, and we went to what they call the Lincoln School, and they put us in the basement. That's and still Lincoln, Lincoln site, school. isn't it? Different school. Different school, but it, uh, there it or, is. originally it was the high school. Yeah. Originally that was the high school. And did you go on the second floor there? or No, I was down in the basement. In the basement? The town, the town was starting to boom then with the oil, and they got more children, and they, they had the sixth, I think it was the sixth grade, in the basement, Miss Balderson was a teacher. Yeah, and looking in the background here, you can see there are not that many houses back there either. Mr. A. L. Vincent was the principal. Yeah, and that wasn't grass out there, and they probably didn't have grass. That was dirt. <laughs> yeah, that's an artist conception because those are that's from an old postcard, black and white postcard, and they painted them with their Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, from uh, Lincoln School, where'd you go? The old high school? Yeah, I went to the old high school for part of a yeah. year. Yeah. The, old, the high school was on where Cabrillo High School is now at the end of Nita Street. Yeah. And then I went to uh, started Villanova in Ojai in October of that year. They opened late that year. Well, this was Villanova's first year. Right? First year they opened that year. What year was it? 1924. 1924. Mm -hmm. That's in Ojai. Here it is. And this is the graduating class? No, that's the first class that was in the school. That's it. That's it. That's the whole student body. The whole student body. Do you recognize anyone there? Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, sure. There's George McGrath there, who's head of the McGrath Ranches in Oxnard, and uh, Bill McLaughlin over here, and uh, Robert McGrath, who is, he's dead now, he's a priest, and uh, George Howard right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. His father was a banker in Los Angeles, and he financed the school. And the priest there is Father John Howard, and the founder, and Father Jonathan McCarthy. And Bill McLaughlin over here on the right, and the man on the end is the Davies. The Davies are out of Ojai, all born and raised. And the man on that end is the Sattlers. They're all Ojai people, old timers. Well, which one of those built the railroad? Mm -hmm. Was it the, the man Sattler? On the end. No, Cashin. Cashin. Okay. And uh, his father built the Ojai Railroad. Now they're going to make it into a... And he was a relation of the... Uh, of, of, uh, uh, Car Ed Cardi. He was part oh, of yeah. Cardi's family. Yeah. His, his aunt up in Ohio was Minnie McDonald. And now it's a... But everyone... When I was going to school up there in quite a few years, the passenger train went to Ohio every day, yeah. whether anybody was on there or not. But Just keep the right away. Well, yeah. they had to do it, I guess. Yeah. The Southern Pacific didn't like it, probably. But Joe, what did you do as kids in those days? No, you just entertained yourself. There wasn't any self for entertainment, playgrounds or anything like that. And, and the kids, uh, of course, the beach was down there, but we didn't go much to the beach. That water was too cold. And there, yeah. there, the river was a great fishing river. It was supposed to be one of the best fishing rivers in in California at that time. Uh -huh. yeah. The steelhead used to run like the salmon do at certain times of the year. And then if you were Fluent enough, or could borrow a horse, you'd ride horseback, and uh, I rode horseback. I used to, and we used to hike when I was at Villanova. We used to hike into the Sespe. Now, there was no roads into the Sespe in those days. You went over the mountains, and if you were lucky enough, you could borrow a horse to pack your stuff. Yeah. From. Yeah. That was an old picture of Ventura Main Street there. Yeah, that we had on. Uh -huh. uh, I think that was before it was paved. Do you remember the paving? Well, the paving was down two lanes down the center of the street and the sides were dirt. And uh, part of the sidewalks were in, but part of them were the wood sidewalks. The old wooden sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Now, when it rained, that must have been a real mucky kind of mucky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, here we have a, a, an impressive building. What was this? That was the old city hall at the corner of Maine and California Street. That's where the, what is it, Ventura Hotel is there now, I think. Uh -huh. right. And you pointed out a statue that appears there. Uh -huh. On the left side. Left left side side there. There's a statue, and I think it was a, a, like a water fountain. And I've seen pictures of it, but I don't think anybody knows what it was or whatever happened to it. Or disappeared. Mm -hmm. well, I suspect it was a water fountain, probably. Well, now, you were talking once about uh, a streetcar that uh, used to run up and down Main Street, Chestnut and all that, mm -hmm. and you saw that one day. No, I was on Oh, you mean the old? Yeah. One of the old ones. Well, the old streetcar ran from downtown. It was drawn by a mule or a horse, mm -hmm. 
went down Chestnut Street, went down to the depot. Yeah. And uh, in later years, it was one of the two cars, there was two of them, at the corner of Santa Clara and Hemlock Street. Mm -hmm. uh, one, somebody had one of those old cars for kind of a flower house or a hot house out in the back there. And later, somebody, I told somebody that they went hunted, but it was gone or something. Now, here's, here's an impressive picture. What do we have here? This is our old mortuary. We were in this building, which is an empty lot east of the old mission. Oh, yeah. It's half of the existing building that's there now. And we moved out of there in 1921. Mm -hmm. And we were in there from 1913 to 1921. And that's the, the automobile fleet we had in those days. The fleet? <laughs> we have a grand looking hearse there. What well, kind of a. Well, the one on the, on the right was the first one. And that was about a 1914 glide, and, the, and that kind you you, you had a you cranked it, I guess. Yeah, I had it cranked. And you got it, and then you had a plug, and you got it going on the magneto, and you got it going. You pulled that out quick and stuck it over here on the battery. Oh. Or it died. Oh. And it was of course right hand drive, and the next one was Pope Hartford, which is a well known car, and still car buffs know what a Pope 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 Hartford is. Yeah. Big four cylinder with a lot of power, right hand drive. This I learned to drive on the courthouse on the Pope Hartford. And the one on the left there is, is a Hudson Sedan, seven passenger uh, open Hudson. car. Quite a, quite, a, quite a fleet. Quite a fleet. You know, there was a. Tell us a little about the end of town, how it's changed in your lifetime, Joe. We keep mentioning well, Christman Avenue. Christman Avenue was where the a block or so behind the old Lincoln School and where the high school was. Mm -hmm. And there was practically nothing except scattered farmhouses out from there. What did they raise in there? Oh, <coughs> originally down below Thompson, that was part of the Dixie Thompson Ranch, and that was all beans, mm -hmm. line of beans. And on Vince, on the Brown Main Street, uh, Vegetable garden was uh, there. was an old man, Mr. Ayala, used to grow vegetables down around uh, just this side of the present high school. How would they? Get, how would the housewife get a hold of those? I mean, he raised them. Oh, he raised them, and then they, he probably had a wagon and went around and sold them. Delivered them. them. Delivered them. Yeah. Supplied the grocery stores, I suppose. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> well let's get back to. Uh, uh, we're going to stop on these pictures now because we're going to come back to them in a little bit. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the, what kids did in those days. Did you ever have a circus or anything like that come to town? Oh, yeah, a circus would come every year or so. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, when they'd come to town, then they'd have a parade. Yeah. And they'd put their lion and a tiger in a wagon down and then have the elephants. Yeah. And one time, Pinto Rodriguez, was the ice man, and you delivered ice out of the wagon, and the, of course his team would s stop, and he'd deliver ice, and the, the elephant spooked the team. So down the side of Main Street, here comes this team of horses, roam! <laughs> so there was a lot of horse people in town in those days, and they got it stopped a couple of blocks down the line. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. That's, that's a familiar name. Pinto was quite a foot football player, as I remember, and his brother. He was a big man. And his, uh, he didn't he play much football in his day. They were probably... I saw his daughter at the concert just the other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what else did you folks do? How about Fourth of July? Was that a pretty good time? Well, Fourth of July, you always had the firecrackers and all that sort of stuff. You know, and, uh, one Fourth of July, a battleship was in out here. One, I don't know what it was. And they brought a couple of thousand sailors to town. Of course, there was nothing to do in this town for 2,000 sailors except fire firecrackers. And Main Street was red firecrackers from one side to the other. I remember. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to come back and talk a little bit more about Fourth of July and some other things. We're visiting with Joe Reardon. And we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back. Okay? Well, we're visiting with Joe Reardon. And we're talking about early Ventura. And we've been talking with Joe about Fourth of July celebrations, the ones the kids have. Now, surely it, it wasn't all quiet or sailors in town. There must have been some kind of an explosion or something. Oh, one uh, incident I 
of some of the young gay blades, the older fellows, they went up on the hill just behind downtown and uh, set off uh, some black powder that busted about half the windows in town. <laughs> <laughs> they catch her? <laughs> oh, they didn't do anything. If they know, they didn't catch her. They probably knew who it was, but the, the town marshal, he, he didn't have time to catch him. But, you know, you're the man that told me about the marshal's light. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the marshal's light. Oh, the night watchman. In the old days, uh, they had no uh, radio or anything. The night watchman was downtown. And if you wanted the police or the sheriff or anybody, you call the telephone operator at the corner of Oak and Main, there was a red light. And she'd flick that on, and the night watchman, who was supposed to be doing his rounds if he wasn't asleep in some corner, yeah. would go to see what was going. <laughs> that was the alarm. That was the alarm. That was the way it was done. There used to be a bakery down near you, too. Right next to our old mortuary, the old Millbrook yeah. Bakery, a yeah. German family that put out the good bakery. Of course, the, down the fraud, fraud, they made the French bread down there, uh, old Mr. Cola. Yeah. And every night, they'd, he'd get his French bread going, and be coming out of the ovens about 10 o'clock at night, and you could smell it all over downtown. Oh. A great treat would be to go over and get some hot French bread and lots of butter. Hard on your digestion, but it was awful good. Sure was good, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we've shown the new Hearst and the, and the um, what do you have? It wasn't the Studebaker. What was that? Pope Hartford. Pope Hartford. But in the 20s, there was quite a disaster hit this county in the St. Francis Dam. How were you involved in this? Well, my father was coroner, and it was during Easter vacation. Uh, not, yeah, I guess it was March Easter vacation. And uh, the sheriff or somebody called 1 o'clock in the morning and said that a dam had broken. And, uh, of course, we never even knew there was a dam anywhere around. I never heard of such a thing as a dam. Yeah. And, uh, and the first indication of, that they had is when the Edison substation at Casita Springs, which was there then, went out because the power went out. And uh, so I, during the, of course, up during the night, I was in high school, maybe 16 or so, 17. And my father and I went to Santa Paula, and as far as you could go on Harvard to the Isabel School there. Yeah. And you could still see the river running high, yeah. tremendously high. And it had been in Hub, by that time, of course, it had gone back down a little bit. But this is uh, Isabel School uh, showing the foundations of all those houses that have been ripped up. That was on Harvard up. Boulevard. Yeah. On the west side of John Paul. Yeah. Well, that was quite a chore for a corner. Oh, yeah. There was 400 and some odd, 250 deaths in it, yeah. uh, 300 or so of them in Ventura County, and the rest were somewhere in Los Angeles County. Of course, it put out, the, knocked out the bridge at Satakoy and the bridge at Montalvo, as I remember, and all the Willard Bridge up in Santa Paula, and those were all gone. Yeah. Um, I think they could get over the Satakoy Bridge. It was they almost, it almost got the approach on the south end. But, uh, my mother was teaching school in Somos, and I was, she, oh. she, that was the only school, only bridge open, mm -hmm. so she could get to school. Where she got that? Uh, they couldn't get across. Yeah. Uh, well, that, how long did that job last for you? Well, of course, I went back to school yeah. after Easter, and then as soon as, as uh, school let out, the city of Los Angeles started to clean up the riverbed, put crews of men in there, and whenever they would find a body, they would call in. Yeah. And uh, there was three of us. We'd go up and down the river and find just and bring them on in, identify them, photograph them, and yeah. this and that. Now, how did your father get to be coroner? Well, he, he, it was an elective office. He was, he ran against uh, old J.E. Noyes back in 1921. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the responsibility of all yeah, he was accidental the deaths? Or? In the whole county. Yeah, whole right. county, yeah. So he was cornered until he passed on in 1937. What changes have you seen? Oh, it's an entirely different country now, I mean. Yeah. We had, sure, we had cars and transportation, but it wasn't fancy roads or anything. And yeah. I used to know practically every back 
road and every ranch in this side of Ventura County. No, it's all freeway or good oh, part of it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, there's some miserable years there in the 30s, the Depression years. Mm -hmm. You went through them like everybody else. Yeah, we got through. We ate, so a lot of people didn't eat very well. You established quite a fondness for chicken, I understand. <laughs> I ate a lot of chicken because uh, several people paid off their bills in chicken, you know. You the farmers used the barter system in those sure, days. I, I remember my dad paying the paper boy in a sack of walnuts. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I don't doubt it. You know, you have a sister, Mary. I remember a, a great singing voice, and I think she played the organ. Yeah, for many years. Many there. years there. How is she? Well, she got along like the rest of us. Retired? Just retired now. Yeah. And then you have another brother. Uh, let's see, that would be Oliver, named after your dad. And what's he up to? He's retired. Now, <laughs> Joe, they're all retired. <laughs> well, the older ones are. My brother James in Oxnard is yeah. still active. Well, are there some, uh, some more future mortuary people in your family? Not in my family. My yeah. brother in Oxnard has a son and a daughter and a son-in-law in the Oxnard River oh. mortuary. But he's going to be the third generation then. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Any other changes you can think of, Joe, come about in your business? Well, it's an entirely different business. It's uh, of course, with rapid transportation and everything you have, and air travel, and yeah. it used to be in the old days, we'd make a shipment to the remains east, why it was a big job, uh, five days back there and all that sort of thing. Now you put them on the plane, it's there the next day. Does that look familiar? Well, that's the, where we were before, before 1921, or 1921 and before. Yeah. It's, uh, still, that building is still part of the building that has been rebuilt and was oh. Easterwoods owned it and made a hotel out of it during the boom days. But that's the site of your first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the old mission, big trees there. They've grown. Mm -hmm. And you come this way, there was the bakery and then there was the armory hall, which was, I don't know what they built it for, it was uh, used as a dance hall when I was a oh, kid. Oh yeah, sure. Dance hall. I think they use a skating rink. <coughs> yeah, it was an empty lot, and then the Anna Cap Hotel was at the corner. Yeah, that was a big, beautiful hotel. Yes, it was. This town's got some more beautiful hotels. Sure does now. Uh -huh. Oh, in those days they had the old De Leon up at uh, Chestnut. Chestnut. Yeah. Chestnut. Yeah. I, I think, I think they tore them down during the oil boom days, and then the depression came along, and they were never rebuilt. I think that was the story. Yeah. Of course, the Anna Cap was all wood. It probably was a fire trap. A real fire trap. Those are dangerous places. Mm -hmm. Well, anything else you'd like to talk about? I think we think we pretty well covered it. Well, we didn't cover it, but Joe, you're pretty active in uh, service clubs around town, and I know what have you, what have you been up to as far as your civic duties here lately? Oh, I I'm, I don't go to meetings if I can get out of it anymore <laughs> outside of the Lions Club, which I enjoy. It. You like that? Mm -hmm. What, what part of city activities, though, have you played? What have you played? Well, I was six years on Ventura City Council. Were you? And before that, I was kind of... What court. years were those? Forty... Uh, during the war years, forty... Forties? Forty-one yeah. to... 40 what were the big problems the city had in those days? Was it traffic? Uh, tra water was a big problem in those days. We didn't have the Casitas Dam there. In fact, we were at one time the the water. We didn't have water on Ventura Avenue for a while, for you know, several hours, and, and uh, the old people were mad at us, and everybody was mad at us. And, uh, well, you didn't have a traffic problem in the forty early forties because oh, yes. you had gasoline. Uh, well, rationing. of course, Ventura. You know, the main highway came through Ventura up Main Street, yeah. and people used to cuss at Ventura because you couldn't take a half an hour to get through town. And then later they moved it down, moved down to Meta Street. Meta. They have the vegetable turf down there. The trucks used to turn over. And, yeah. yeah. They all turned over down there on that. That's yeah. still a sharp corner. That yeah. always will be, I guess. I suppose. They're not going to change that. So. Well, let's see. 
Um, you were mentioning fishing down there on Ventura River. They, they're working on that, trying to get it back. What are you, are you a fisherman, Joe? Oh, I used to, years ago, fish. You don't? Not anymore. But the Ventura River, of course, in those days, there was, it ran all year round. Of course, the, there hadn't been the uh, water pumped out of the ground. And the, in fact, over in Oxnard, the ground, the well was just to run artesian. It just run water. Yeah. And the steelhead would run there like the salmon. They'd run up, make their runs, and trout. And it was a very famous fishing stream. I don't know whether it'll ever come back now. I, I doubt it because the, the dam holds that water back and they let a certain amount, but it don't yeah. run not, that, not, that much. <coughs> not that much. What do you think of the biggest problem today in Ventura is? <laughs> oh, taking care of all these people we got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got a lot of folks. And you're going to get more. Yeah. I hate to see it, but yeah. I can't expect it. The little old town, how big was it when you arrived? 3,000. 3,000 people in Ventura? 25,000 in the county, yeah. And now we're up to, uh, Ventura's got what, 80,000? 80, 80, something like that. In the county, like 600,000, something like that. You've seen a lot of growth, Joe. Absolutely. Good health to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Take care, and Thank thanks you. for being with us. Mm -hmm.